Hey guys, so I just decided to make a new video today, and the video is basically going to be on binding in Tikinta. So basically with Tikinta, you can bind various functions to the widgets. So for example, I have a GUI here that's pre-made, and it can be found in the GitHub GIST. So in this GUI, as you can see, we have a search box, we have a button that says go to site, and we have these two entry forms. One's for the first name, and one's for the well, last name. It could be anything. And then we have a tree view here. And as you can see, the tree view has the parent node as education. Then under that, we have the website name and a URL. So effectively, what I want to do is bind these to, um, to various functions. So that, for example, if I double click on this tree view, an event will be triggered, and that event will take me to the Code Wars URL and then the Python spot URL, et cetera. I also want another um, event in which I right click um, on the selected row and it will delete that selected row from the tree view. Another one that I want, another binding, is that I enter a, um, a website here, like a company's name, so like GitHub, for example. I click on the go to site button and then it'll take me to the website. And then the last event I want is to bind these two boxes together so that if I enter the first name and enter the second name, the um, a label will be shown that will um, show these as I type. So it will record my keystrokes. Okay, so an event will be triggered after every um, release of the keystroke that I do. Okay, so that's enough of the introduction. I'm going to create the events now. Okay, cool. So first things first, we need to create the methods. And as I said, all the code will be in the GitHub GIST. So we have an event parameter, and this event is the um, event that, um, that triggers this function. It's the event that occurs. Okay, so this event is called open link. So selected underscore row equals tree view URLs dot selection okay so basically what this is doing is the row that you click on get that get that row so get the identifier for that row right cool and then what we're going to do so we're going to try and um, open it in a new browser so try row underscore url is equal to tree view underscore urls dot item selected underscore row values for that and then we're going to get the or the second um, the second value in that tuple. Okay, so if I just go to tree view rows to show you what I mean. So when I populated the table, there's two um, there's two values, the website name and the URL to the website. So basically, index one is the URL, which is www.codewars.com. So that's what's going to take. That's what this is going to return. From that tree view and then what i'm going to do i'm going to print an f string and it's going to say okay i'm not sure what happened there but it's going to print go into and then row underscore url okay and then web browser so we import web browser from the Python standard library dot open underscore new underscore tab. So it has a method called open new tab and it takes in the URL and it will open it in the browser. So row underscore URL. Cool. And then accept. So this exception is if you click on the um, grouping of the tree view or you click on a blank um, tree view row then it's going to trigger this exception. And then all we're going to do, we're just going to print invalid row selected. Okay, so that's for our open link event. Okay, and then next is we're going to do a delete row. So a delete underscore row, and it's going to take in the parameter event. So this is all this is going to be is selected underscore row equals tree view underscore urls dot selection and if selected 
underscore row. Then tree view underscore URLs. So our tree view dot delete that row. So selected underscore row. And that's like the identifier for the row. That will delete this row from the tree view. Okay, that's when this function is um, triggered. Next is the display full name event. So display underscore full underscore name event. It's going to take in well the first name. Sorry, first underscore name is going to be it's going to be um, it's going to be the value that we enter in our entry box. So our entry box for so the first name is called ent underscore first underscore name dot get that value that the user entered. And then last underscore name is going to be equal to ent underscore last underscore name dot get. Okay. And then the label underscore full name. So this is the label. The text um, property of that label is going to be equal to f the first name space last name. Okay, so we save that. And then now we're going to um, do the last one, which is the search website. So this is what we're going to bind to the button, search website event. Okay, so website underscore name is going to be equal to the search box dot get, and then we're going to put it to lower, so all, um, all characters are going to be in lowercase. And then a URL is going to be equal to, so we're going to put in an F string, www.com, and it's going to uh, take in the website name. Okay. Then what we're going to do, we're going to print another F string. It's going to say, go in to URL. Okay. And then lastly, we're going to do the web browser, open new tab. And we're going to open that URL, that URL that we created. Okay, cool. So these are all our methods. Let's just run quickly just to see there's no errors. Cool. Okay, cool. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create our bindings. So basically, we're going to bind our widgets to these functions. Okay, so let's bind our widgets. So ent underscore first name. The um, events that's going to be ran is the key release. So basically what key release says is um, every time you release this key, execute the particular um, function. So it's going to execute this function every time you release your key when you're inside this widget. Sorry, so it should be ent underscore first underscore name dot bind. And then yeah, key release display full name. Okay, next is int underscore last underscore um, name dot bind, and we're going to do the same thing for this one. So key release, then display full name. So it's going to run that method, and then the next one is the button. So then button underscore site dot bind. And it's going to take in a button one. So the, what one denotes is the left mouse button. So this basically says, when you click the left mouse button once, um, trigger this um, function. So search website. OK, and then next is the tree view um, itself. So tree view URLs dot bind. This one's going to be double one. And it's going to trigger the open underscore link function. OK, and then tree view, uh, tree view underscore URLs dot bind is going to be button free. So button free is basically the right mouse um, button. So one is the left mouse, two is the middle, and three is the right, basically a right click. 
Okay, and then that's going to trigger the delete underscore row um, function. So yeah, there we have it. Our key releases, our button one, our double um, one, which is a double left click, and button three, which is a single right click. Cool. So now we're going to run our methods. Let's see. Any errors? Okay, so I did URL, but it should be URLs. Okay, so let's run now. Perfect. Okay, so now let's open this um, category. And now on double click, it should take me to codewars.com. Okay, perfect. It should take me to Python spot. And these are websites that I found useful when I was um, learning Python. Okay, and then it should take me to Reddit, this one here. Okay, perfect. And yep, so here now in the search box, if I enter a website, so for example, GitHub, it should take me to GitHub. Perfect, and it's in lowercase as well. So that's perfect. Uh, let's try YouTube. Yeah, it takes me to YouTube. Okay, perfect. So what we're going to do now is um, just the last one. So this is the entry boxes. So every key press that I do, it should trigger the um, display full name. So the label is going to display the name in real time. So you can use this for any type of like automation of any sorts, um, login, um, yeah, anything you can really think of. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Um, we're going to have a GitHub guest with all of this information and any questions you can ask me. And yeah, like I, like I said before as well, I don't normally lay out my code like this. I normally use the more um, object oriented approach. This is very messy, but it's just easier to write and um, easier to explain as well. And it's faster. So yeah, that's all for now. Um, take care.